Well, I discovered the case of another murder before that of Bucks Row. It happened in George Yard. We shall put it on the map in order to see if it corresponds to our area of research. We must place the murder of Martha Tabram in George Yard on the map. That is where Martha Tabram's murder took place. There's no point going there. I already have all the information we need on that matter. You see, this murder took place in the area in which our killer lives, his safe zone. Nonetheless, there are two major differences between the murder of this Martha Tabram and that of Polly Nichols. Firstly, the blows inflicted are not the same. And the second difference? It follows on from a doctor's opinion. He claims two weapons might have been used, and if there is one group of people we absolutely must not trust in this business, it's doctors. Don't you agree, Watson? Watch it, Holmes. Tabram's murder took place in an area where the murderer, whose cowardice is clear, was able to make a quick getaway, that is to say, near his home. For his second murder, he would have wanted to go further afield, so the police would not link these two cases. And, as for the other murders, seeing the ineffectiveness of his last one, he headed in different directions to kill his victims while still staying in the vicinity and without going any further than necessary, and all the while planning his escape. My dear Watson, we now know what this man looks like, in what area he lives, and that he suffered directly or indirectly from syphilis. Let's not forget the anatomical knowledge he must almost certainly possess. Given his lower class background, a butcher seems very likely. However, it may be the case that the man was a butcher once, but is no longer. He might also have been a medical assistant. Who knows? That's why we need the testimonies of the other Joseph and Dr. Tumblety, in order to be certain. What shall we do, Holmes? As the police's cooperation is futile and can be ruled out, we have nothing to do but wait. Watson, wait, and hope we see one of these two men before the killer strikes again. Ah, at last, a long day's work done. How are you doing, Holmes? Fine, Watson, just fine. I suppose you still haven't heard any news from Whitechapel? No, Watson. It's been almost a month now, who knows? Our killer may have brought justice upon himself, overcome by remorse and ignominy for his actions. Not a chance, Watson. You haven't done anything about the story of a kidney that was sent in the post and reported by the papers. Why not? The killer left a message on one occasion with the intention of harming. The letter accompanying this package served no purpose other than to give value to its recipient and arouse disgust against its sender. The killer has never done anything for nothing. In order to authenticate the Galston Street message, he left an indisputable piece of evidence. Can we really say as much about this kidney? I don't know. All I know is that there are letters piling up on your desk. Isn't it time to move on to another case? Absolutely not, Watson. I think that the other Joseph is reluctant to meet me. The man he saw must certainly have put the fear of God in him, a man well known for his violence and his hatred towards Jews. There can't be any shortage of those in Whitechapel. I have hope yet. As for Dr. Tumblety... We found him, Mr. Holmes. We found him. Who's that? Dr. Bumblebee. He's been locked up by the Bobbies, but they've let him loose. Oi! He was looking round like a rat who's scared of his own shadow. He's gonna do a run at years. Watson, this is our chance. The game is afoot. Let's hope that Tumblety will go to collect his trunk. As for you, my little friends, thank you for lifting this burden that has been on my shoulders for almost a month. He is here. The doctor is here, up in his room. Peeking through my door, I saw him go up the stairs, and I think that he has a pistol. Regarding the trunk, did you do what I told you to? Yes, I jammed the lock and filled the trunk with stones. Shall we call the police? Absolutely not. Go home, lock your doors, and if you hear a gunshot, shout as loudly as you can. Watson, we must disarm this man at all costs before attempting to confront him. Come, have your pistol at the ready and stay alert.
Don't move a muscle or I shoot. Who? But what is going on? Bravo, Watson. I take back everything I ever said about your less than full involvement in our investigations. Listen, Mr. Policeman. I already told everything to your colleagues at the station, so... Don't you believe it, sir. We're not with the police. We are here to talk about human organs, an area in which you seem to have a great deal of interest. What? But who are you? We are the ones holding the pistol. Listen, Tumblety, tell us everything you know and you will be spared from the noose or a bullet. Have you tried to get hold of any female genitalia from someone during these past months? <laughs> so that's it. You English. Listen, as it happens, I do have a collection of female genital organs which I hold dear and never miss the chance to show my friends whatever the occasion. If you knew what I feel when my eyes meet the young men's as they contemplate with astonishment and disgust this soft and flabby skin that they worship and place at the center of all their passions. Women repulse me, gentlemen. They are one of nature's greatest mistakes. Lying, haughty, and most of all, nauseating. No, sirs. Men. Mankind. We are not made to soil ourselves with such animals, and it is my task to educate my peers, like the ancient Greeks used to do, and put them on the path to masculine relationships, the only kind worthy of our intelligence. My God, this man has lost his marbles, Holmes. You haven't answered my question. Did you attempt to obtain any female organs? Indeed, but a long time ago. I was living in Liverpool at the time. A few of my specimens were starting to lose their freshness. But despite the sum proposed, the heads of the university hospitals refused to accede to my demands. The fear of what others would say, certainly. I know nothing more similar to an arrogant fowl than an English doctor. Yakety yak, always showing off in the courtyard with their haughty airs. And as soon as... Shut it, Tumblety. So, was it you who killed all of these women? Yes or no? I regret to say that it was not. If I had really wanted a few more uteri, I would have had them brought in from the United States, where it would cost me much less than here. Or I would have shown a few gold coins in the hallways of a morgue or a hospital in London, and they would have kissed my feet to sell them to me, and not taken the least risk. But kidneys are all the latest, aren't they? I think that I could find one tomorrow for less than a pound. In short, Gentlemen, I do not know your killer, and I don't know why he's doing that. But if you come across him one day, please send him my friendship and my deepest respect. You've gone too far this time. Come, Watson, let's not get carried away now. Thank you for your assistance, Doctor. If I may offer some advice, you should leave England as soon as possible. Each day that you remain in this country is a risk that an intelligent man would not take. My pistol? Without that, it will be even more risky. Can we believe this man, Holmes? He can't be the murderer, and his story regarding the organs fits. But we can't afford to take the slightest risk. I will ask the Baker Street Irregulars to follow him. Listen, lads, when Tumblety leaves here, follow him discreetly and come and tell me as early as possible tomorrow where he is currently residing. Understood? Understood, Captain. You are already ready, Holmes. What is going on? I have been waiting for you for at least an hour, Watson. It would appear that a new drama has unfolded. The youngsters came to give me this address, but I have some doubt as to the actual location we are going to. Let's try anyway. At worst, we may come across the Baker Street Irregulars to put us in the right direction. We are lost, Holmes. No, we're not, Watson. We are heading for the very street I'd hoped for, but as I wasn't sure it was this one, I've made a few big detours in order to find the right one. I'll know it when I see the name. Why, of course, Holmes. Why didn't I think of that? The great Sherlock Holmes can't...
How are you, my friend? Are you not feeling well? No. My friend is a doctor. He can take care of you. Don't go there. She... She... He came here, and he... Now, now, Watson, take care of him. Can't talk. Wait for the coppers. Are they coming? My eyes are crying. Uh, no. Go find them too, mister. I'll stay here and keep an eye out. Go! No, I must await my friend. Ah, here he is. Watson, are you there? How are you? Uh, fine, Holmes. And you? What happened? Hello, sir. Where are we, Watson? In Whitechapel, Holmes. This must be Dorset Street. You don't seem very well. Do you need something? Indeed, Watson. Some clay, a great big piece of clay. I would ask for some wine, too, but as you know, I taste nothing but melodrama. What is over there? A trip from which you will never return, Watson. Trust me, don't go there. A trip? Behind this door? In this room? It's not strictly a door, it's more of a portal, a threshold, and what lies behind it is not the mortal realm, Watson. It is a place beyond time and space, the gift of a frantic artist who made use of his talent in order to grant us access to his world, Watson. Beyond that threshold is an abyss. Hell. The police won't take long to arrive, and the last thing I want is to waste precious time on them. Could you lead me out of this area and take me home? You should come and eat, Holmes. Mrs. Hudson has worked wonders. The joint has been cooked medium rare. If only you would tell me what was in the courtyard. The answer, Watson. The answer, Holmes? Yes, the answer to a question that you asked me a few weeks ago. And how the devil can the answer to a question I asked you be found in that courtyard? And what question are you referring to, Holmes? How our killer set about reaching the height of horror by taking another victim, Watson. <laughs> Did I not tell you that I wanted to avoid melodrama? Do you mean to say that... Yes, that's what was in that room. You help towards the colour. All that's missing is the odour, but I shall let that pass. The mutilations almost all resulted in large removals of flesh. My photographic memory noted them all in great detail, the shape, size and location, and thanks to the softness of this clay and your medical knowledge, I believe we can attempt to determine what is missing from this lady. Don't you think we should wait for the medical examiner's opinion? Surely not, Watson. This massacre has gone on long enough. I can assure you that I will do everything in my power to get our hands on Jack the Ripper before this night is out. <laughs> <laughs> 